Tap the Goldstorff and I'm on a mission to find the data science and AI experts who are willing to talk data to me. Today, I'm asking the age old tech question, where are all the women? And to help answer that, I'm meeting with Erin Young, because it's vital for you and for me that we understand the diversity issues at play in AI and data science and do what we can to ensure better representation. Erin, thanks so much for joining me. Of course. This is a tough one we're gonna dig into today, but I'm thrilled that I get to quiz you. Let's start with the first question. Uh, where are all the women in STEM? Yeah. So, where are all the women in STEM? It's a massive question. Uh, not least because when we're thinking about STEM, STEM is a huge field, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. It encompasses so many different careers, everything from what we think of as a traditional scientist in a lab, right through to all the different roles in the tech industry, web developer, designer, software engineer. And this problem, it's, it's happening differently globally. Basically, there are not enough women in STEM. No. Um, we're about 50% of the UK population, but only about 24% of the UK STEM workforce are women. And if we look in tech, only about 16% of the UK tech workforce are women. And of that, only about 3% are black women, which is obviously horrendously low and don't even get me started on numbers in leadership. And who is this really a problem for? So it's obviously a problem for women. Um, jobs in STEM are extremely rewarding. They're some of the most exciting jobs of today, but also of the future, jobs of tomorrow. It's a quickly growing field. There's a lot of skills gaps as well, which need to be filled. Yeah. And women deserve to have access to these really exciting jobs which are literally inventing the future but it's also a problem for everyone because if we're not including women in key decisions around science and technology we're actually designing for systems that do not benefit society as a whole right so for example we've seen an instance of or lots of instances of where seat belts and airbags have been designed only on male dummies so that when they're actually implemented in cars, women are much more badly hurt, often fatally, in car crashes. Um, you can clearly see how having more women making decisions about this would have, would have <laughs> mitigated for that. And this problem is even worse in AI as well. Something that's important to say is this isn't done deliberately, this isn't a malicious thing. It's just obvious if, if women aren't involved making the decisions, you can see how we're not paying attention to women's issues why do you think it is that um, science and engineering is so male dominated? Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's a number of different reasons. It's a tech, tech and STEM are in general a very privileged space, and it's happening at two two key points. You know, women aren't entering the workforce, and women are leaving. Number of different reasons women aren't entering, but. Honestly, I think STEM and tech have a really bad image problem, right? They're not seen, they're framed as being a space for only one type of person. When we think of a scientist, when we think of a technologist, we typically think of one type of image, perhaps someone geeky, someone nerdy, um, maybe not great social skills. And we need to have better role models and fewer stereotypes in the industry in order to welcome lots of different groups in. And we see women leaving as well because of certain workplace cultures that perhaps feel alienating. If you're not, you don't fit that traditional what a scientist looks like. Are there examples of where, uh, you know, swathes of women's work is being appreciated less than men's work? So um, we released a report, a report called Where Are All The Women, looking at the lower numbers of women working in data science and AI and why this is happening. And one of the things we found is that unfortunately, women's work is sometimes valued as, as less than men's. So we see that when more women begin to enter a field, salaries drop. And this has happened in web development, for example, most recently. And a, a 
key instance of this was at the beginning of World War II. A vast majority or a large number of women worked in the computing workforce. They were the original computers. And then as more money began to enter the field and prestige began to enter the field, the women kind of gradually got sidelined into the lower paying roles. So yeah, unfortunately that is the case. And, and do you see that playing out yet in artificial in, uh, intelligence and data science? There's some early signs that that's definitely happening. Um, we did some work at the Turing and we, 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 we found that, that yeah. within different roles in AI and data science, women are gradually being sidelined into kind of less frontier roles we like to see, which are naturally lower paying and have less prestige. Um, and you know, this comes back again to the question you asked me before about why does it matter that we don't have as many women in the space and, and it's particularly scary in AI. If women aren't involved in AI, it could actually be worse because these systems are learning from, from past data, from past instances. And so they're learning whatever biases, whatever they're taught and learning from themselves. So, so we see, um, we've seen that some hiring systems have discriminated against women because they've learned from the current workforce they have in the company at the moment, right. which, as we've said, a majority men, mm -hmm. a majority white, mm -hmm. a majority young, you know, able-bodied, and then that's replicating when when they're hiring for more people. Um, it's very, it's, it's scary. It's very scary. Have you yourself been uh, been asked? You don't, you know, you don't look like a yeah. like a scientist. <laughs> Do you feel um, yeah? It's, it's inter I think I'm, I'm really lucky because where I work, I, I feel people are aware are aware of these issues. But I definitely, you know, I didn't, I didn't start kind of in science and technology, and I wasn't at school a, a traditional STEM mm -hmm. student. I didn't see myself mm -hmm. as having kind of capabilities in science and technology and I really wish I'd not, you know I'd had more role models at the time and, and they had given me more confidence to know that even if I didn't pick those subjects early on I could transition into STEM and even now I do still feel sometimes have imposter syndrome you know I'm lucky I work in a really supportive really great team but it definitely happens now you know you still struggle with confidence as a woman in, in as a woman in tech yeah what are the ways that we can help black women for example you said this the, the stat was three percent yes yeah there's so there's a few different ways um firstly i think we just we need to listen to what black women and marginalized groups are saying particularly in stem there's a lot of really amazing work being done by particularly black women scholars. We talk about allyship a lot and allyship is very important, mm. but we need to move beyond that to be active advocators for black women and marginalized groups in spaces where they face more discrimination. So that's calling out injustice or if you you know have the power to promote or hire, those kinds of things. It sounds like a lot of this is sort of a systemic power structures. Yeah. I know you've done research on this um, at the Turing. What are the sort of pieces of advice for the industry itself in terms of upping representation of um, of women and uh, diverse women in this space? I think we there's a lot that industry could be doing. And coming back to talking about this image problem of STEM industry, I think you know it, there's a lot of interesting diversity and inclusion initiatives. But I think one of the things that could be done more is, is showing how exciting these careers are and how creative they can be and how you can literally design the kind of future that you want. You can you can create a future for future generations that will benefit rather than harm. And so demystifying STEM careers in this way and providing more exciting role models and interesting role models alongside this is really key. I think as well looking at workplace cultures and making sure that they are as inviting and comfortable and enjoyable for women and marginalised groups is also really key. And paid equally. And paid equally. <laughs> Goes without saying, paid equally, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Um, so you mentioned role models and I have to, I mean, sadly, we're going to have to leave you here, but <laughs> I can't go without asking who are your big role models? You know, I, I fangirl over so many, <laughs> so many women stem icons. <laughs> um, so I think, uh, so Catherine Johnson, yes. it, uh, she 
was one of the first African-American women working at NASA. And she was also in, uh, played by uh, Taraji P. Henson in the movie Hidden Figures, which is also an amazing movie, one of my favorite movies. She's amazing, she was amazing. Joy Buelan Winnie, she founded a group called the Algorithmic Justice League. Who else? So, Amri Amafdon, she is amazing. Hedy Lamar. Yeah. Hedy Lamar was mostly known for being a 1940s Hollywood movie star because she did a lot of work in tech and she did a lot of work in creating wireless communication systems that we use now. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, yes. And I hope that that's inspired everybody at home too. Thank you. Thank you so much.